People usually tell you to follow this and follow that. So you had to shed this off. And think of yourself, what can you do? What would you do? I began to paint. I don't know where it began, how it began. When I was in my master's, I felt that I must shed off all the burden that I had been carrying. I worked almost, <laughs> in whichever way you put it, madly for days and nights. And must have produced hundreds of works, you know, both in watercolour, in oil. Eventually what I found was image of a horse. And I sort of used that image as the basis of my work. Somebody might say that, well, you must have been influenced by Hussain. Yes, Hussain had been to our college and he had given a demonstration. We see Hussain's horses, which we are very impressed by, were sort of in a timeless region. They don't belong to one time. My horse was a tiny little horse and singular, not multiple horses. I enjoyed teaching. My teacher, Professor Bendri, who was the dean at that point of time, said that one of our teachers, Parimu, Ratan Parimu, is going abroad for further studies. Would you teach art history? I was not trained as an art historian, I was trained as a painter. But we all studied art history as part of our syllabus was taught to us. So I said, sir, that's fine. But what to do? I am still studying. I was in my last year. So he said, kya ho gaya? Idhar paro, udhar padhao. He said, teach in the junior classes and learn in the senior. So I finished my second year MA and taught for two more years. I thought that by this time, I should be prepared to show my work, because I had done so much work. And I asked uh, M.F. Hussain whether he would open my show. And I booked the Hangir Art Gallery. And that's how my journey began. So in, on 16th of September, 1963, I boarded the first flight of my life. And that too for going abroad, they're going to London. I wanted to find the world on my own, my own terms. So I wanted to discover. Went to see the great works of Piero della Francesca, went to see the great Sienes, we went to Siena, stayed there, saw the actual mural. A book is a museum without walls. You realize that a small picture that you had seen in your book is actually 20 feet wide. You see the murals. And that was another great eye-opener. In the third year, it is 1966, started taking photographs of my friends. I don't know how I developed my film, but I printed photographs and then I joined them together. And then painted them in, a, in colors which are totally different from what you call the local colour, not the skin colour, you know, but in a painting. So in 66 when I returned, so I began to mix images. I'll give you one little example of a painting I did, which was drawn in crayon or even pencil and then I applied I mixed mediums, you know, even oil upon it. And part of it was redrawn and drawn again and removed and put. And in the middle of it, I put an actual matchbox full of matches. It was a horse brand matchbox, which I lit. And its, it's flame, you know, covered part of it. In a way, my horse had now gone somewhere, in that sense, metaphorically speaking. When you like or love something, it's part of your being. It doesn't remain as in kind of a, you know, 
something that is external to you. I, I remember we were living in a colonial bungalow called Residency Bungalow. And I was making drawing while sitting out there, outside. Then I came inside and I drew the house from inside. And I said, both inside and outside, can I not combine them? Why do you have to take one single perspective, one single view? So I began with that, those two rooms, and then it went in, it begins your journey. Many avenues open. But eventually it turned out to be something which is multiple. You know, it's multivalent. You have so many perspectives. So, in a way it was a discovery. And that made me feel that this is something which I want to continue for some time. And I did four paintings. The fourth painting was the most difficult painting because I had then realized that we live in a political world. We are not free of the politics that's going around. And I had known it because in 69 and 70, some of the worst communal riots took place mostly in Gujarat. So I started a big painting called City for Sale. It's based on, in a way, Baroda. And then I tried to bring in the basic uh, substance of that painting is that there are multiple things happening simultaneously. Like in the city, the part is aflame. People are indulging in arson and even killing. But at the same time you have something else like a cinema hall in which a Bollywood pot boiler is being shown and people are watching it. Well, both of them have some kind of a content which <coughs> quote unquote political. The first one was uh, made in during the emergency. And I had started the painting with a, a, a multi-armed man running away, but eventually removed it. And I only left the street scene with animals. So it's called Speechless City. I was always thinking of Ahmedabad because in many contexts. One is the city which you think is uh, what is it? Is it a habitat? And what kind of habitat? For those who live in the Charles or in the Jopar Patti, the habitat means one thing, and those who live in the middle class homes, another, and those who lived in others. I wanted to use the idea of architecture and human image together. So we found a way of doing it. First we, I have a group of young assistants, friends, you know, they are all young friends. So we did search on Google Earth and found the central part of Ahmedabad, which is the old city. And we drew just the arteries and everything else was concocted by us. So in a way that also was a kind of a relief, release of some of the angst that you carried within you and you found a way to uh, portray it. Our art world at that time, until about the 1980s, was literally governed by public institutions. So we all depended upon these institutions, like the Lelitkala Academy, the National Gallery of Modern Art. These institutions were established uh, in the 50s and then had come to a point where there was some kind of a stagnation. So we thought that we should begin some kind of a movement. We began a journal called Vrushchit, 1969 with Bhopan Khakkar and I both. It's a small, from 
12 pages to 24 pages. We published whenever we felt like, almost every month. So that became a forum and it became a forum for discussion on art institutions. Also a forum, a venue for protest. Twelve of us decided to form a group. During the 60s, 62, 63, there was this couple called Jyoti Pandya and Jayanth Pandya, who were from Bhavnagar, who were very friendly with our artist friends. They said that we offer you our home. Come there, come to Bhavnagar and provide you khana pina sab aapko milega. Aapko jo kuch karna ho karo, baate karo. And we landed there. We thought we must have a big exhibition. Hum ek kalakar ki, samaj lo, aath das painting dikhayenge. Matlab, there will be 12 exhibitions in that major show. So that these two ideas were there. They're coming together, showing together, and of course the name. We couldn't find any name. And in the end, Somebody suggested the house. It was the name of the house, the number of the house, 1891890. So we adopted it as the name of the group. That is how 1890 group was made. There is no single lesson. You learn it by jumping into the fray. You don't give up. You continue. And that is the spirit that should remain alive.